In this video tutorial, you are going to learn how to create the Dynamo script that we number all the doors based on the rooms they're placed in. Currently, I have a Revit project where all the door marks are completely random. Here, I have my Dynamo player with a completed version of the script, and I'm going to click on Run so we can see what happens. As you can see, all doors have been renumbered to use the room number, a separator symbol, in this case, the dash, and then a unique letter. So let's close the Dynamo player. I will open Dynamo and show you all the steps to recreate the script from scratch. Dynamo is ready. We're going to click a new script. The first node that you are going to use is called Categories. So right click and type in Categories, pick this one, and in the drop down menu, press the letter D, pick Doors, and then you're going to right click again and add a node called Ele All Elements of Category. You're going to plug in the doors over here just like this. And now uh, you can see that the script runs and get 51 doors from the project. You can see the entire list of doors in here. Now we're going to use a node from a custom package called Clockwork. Uh, in my case, Clockwork is already installed, but I'll show you how to do it if you don't have it. I'm going to go to the package menu and search for a package. When it's ready, in the search bar, type Clockwork. In this case, you need Clockwork for Dynamo 2.x. In my case, it's already installed, else you will see uh, this symbol. So click on the plus to install the package. In this case, the node we're going to use is called Door Point Rooms. You can see you know this is from the Clockwork package because of the yellow gear symbol. So click here to add this node. I'm going to plug in the elements into the door and I need to add a node called select phase. And in here, I will pick one of the phase in my project and plug it in. So right now I'm running in automatic mode, which means uh, that the script automatically runs. If I put in my cursor, you can see I have a list of from room, then a list of to room, and then uh, a room count at the end, which should be two. In this case, the value that I want to use is the two room. So generally speaking, the direction in which the door is, is opening, that might not always be the case, but that's kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, I'm going to add another node, one of my favorite called group by key. And the keys are going to be two room and the elements, the list is going to be the rooms that we've originally picked. And the result in this case is that the doors are grouped together by using the two room values. So basically I know that this room, for example, room number five in the list uh, has contains three different doors. So it is going to be helpful later on when we need to generate a unique number. Next, we're going to create a unique sequence. So search for the sequence. We need to get the amount, which is the total uh, amount of, of unique numbers we need to generate. So I'm going to add uh, a list count node, just like this, plug in the groups. And in here, I'm going to click on the arrow symbol, use levels, and this is set to level two. And I'm going to plug this into amount. For the start value, I will right click and click create a string node. In this case, I'll use A, plug in start. And the step is just, uh, yeah, the step between either letter or numbers. So typically you will use a step of one. So I'll just double click and type in one and plug in the step. You can see the result. We have an automatic class that contains letters. But the important part here is that the letters are grouped in the same order as the doors that we've grouped by using the rooms previously. Now we need to have to acquire all the unique room number. So I'm going to add a node called room number. And I will get the result from the unique keys over here. In this case, I know there are 30 room numbers in this project. Now I need to combine all these information together. So I will double click to create a code block. And I will type in a very simple equation, room plus, uh, in quotation mark, I will add the separator symbol, in this case, a dash, 
plus again, and I'll type in number. You can see in both the cases of room and number, t's become inputs in the cold block mode. And the number is generated from the sequence. I'll just plug it in like this. And the room, I can plug in the room number node I've previously used. You can see the result. It created the unique number that we want for the doors. Right now, I'll switch from automatic mode to manual because we're about to modify the Revit elements. So I don't want to go too quickly. I want to decide when I'm ready for the script to run. I will bring in a node called element point set parameter by name. And this is going to be the value. The parameter name, I'm going to double click and type in mark in between quotation mark. And the elements, I'm going to use the groups, which are the doors in this case, are listed in the right order, grouped by rooms, just like this. Again, you can see currently I have a bunch of random numbers used for the door marks. I'm going to run the script. And you can see that all of the doors have been renumbered uh, based on the two room value. You might see a couple of issues though. For example, this door as using the EXT number, which is not really a real room. It's just a room we've created um, to have a value over here. But something that you can do is create a door schedule that contains both from room and the two room information. You can see, for example, for this door, I can, in the from room, I can click on the drop down menu and switch from 112 to EXT and run the script again. And going back to Revit, you can see uh, this one actually has been renumbered from using the EXT number to 112. So using the script in combination with the schedule is a great way to go. I will show you a final alternative that you can use. First, I will shut down this Dynamo script. I will open the Dynamo player. I've created an alternative version of this script that is called exclude EXT. So if I use this version, what this does, you can pick a room number. In this case, I've used EXT. And anytime Revit sees a two room attributes that is EXT, it will flip the two room and from room. I will do a little demo here so you can see what happens. And this one also has an option for the separator. So let's just replace the dash by an underscore. I will click on run. And you can see that this door that used to be EXT has automatically been flipped to use 105 instead. And this is a bonus script that you uh, can get if you are a customer of the Manage package for Revit. You can also read the full blog post and download the new pamphlet number 29 about renumbering elements in Revit to learn more information and learn about a script on how to renumber furniture based on the room number, but also on the level. So thank you very much and see you soon.